Hey guys, Andy here, and welcome to my 15 year YouTube anniversary. Woo, yeah. The 1st of March marks my four, that's right, four year anniversary. Today is my five year anniversary as a YouTuber. Today is my uh, six year YouTube anniversary. In addition to this being my March 2013 update video, it's also going to be my seven year YouTube anniversary videos. All right, gang, we're recording. Hey, Andy here. Coming at you with my eight year anniversary slash March 2014 update video for, you guessed it, March 2014. Woo. So yeah, it's uh, March, which is also my nine year anniversary on YouTube. Can you guys believe it? So yeah, in addition to this being my monthly update video for March of 2016, it's also my 10 year YouTube anniversary video. Woo, yeah. <laughs> All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here. And today is my 11 year anniversary on YouTube. Yeah, 13 years on YouTube, that is insane. Hard to believe I've been on the platform for a decade and a half, and a lot has happened during that time, so. Let's get into it. On March 1st, 2006, or March 2nd, if you're living in Japan, I started this very YouTube channel that you watch me on right now. My only intentions with starting this channel was to simply be able to follow YouTubers that I really liked and to leave comments on their videos. Some of the YouTubers that I followed very early on back in the day were guys like Tokyo Kuni, and of course, the late great Roger Swan left a lot of comments on their videos. Sadly, a lot of them have been lost to time thanks to the Google Plus comment merger that happened back in like 2012, 2014. I was able to keep in contact with those folks and I was very passionate about being able to live in Japan someday. And it's thanks to watching their videos, it showed that uh, life in Japan was very possible and not just some far-flung fantasy. From there, I also uploaded a couple YouTube videos, but wasn't really too serious about it. Uh, it was mostly just some clips and stuff that uh, my friends put together with their cameras. It was just a way for us to watch those videos without whipping out good old VCDs. I don't know if y'all remember those, but uh, it's taking it back a bit, huh? But it was just a way for us to document those clips. That way we wouldn't have to keep pulling out the VCDs and like rewinding and fast forwarding to uh, certain parts. And we could all look at them online, wherever we were at. But a funny thing happens when you're on YouTube for a while, you start to get the itch to do it yourself. About two years later, on September 2nd, 2008, just a day after Labor Day in the States, I decided to get my very first camera, the Sanyo Zacti CG6. Originally, I got the camera to be able to take pictures of stuff that I was selling on eBay at the time, as well as do vlogging just on the side just you know to kind of learn how to do it and I didn't really take it all too seriously at the time because my main thing was blogging. I really started making content online back in 2004 just shortly before I graduated high school. I know your boy's a bit old. Originally I was going to do vlogging to accompany certain blog posts but I ended up loving vlogging so much that I ended up switching from blogging to vlogging and uh, I've been doing it pretty much ever since. And it was also during this time, which was the great economic recession of the uh, late 2000s, early 2010s. At the time, I was a college dropout with no real job prospects or anything, really. Got to a point to where I couldn't get any work, like, anywhere. I decided to join the US Navy in 2010, and thanks to the power of YouTube, <laughs> I documented my entire Navy career from 2010 when I enlisted to 2015 when I got out. During that time, I vlogged about my experiences not only in basic training, but also ATT school, which is apprentice technical training, which was like a basic electronics course, to going out to San Diego to learn my rate or my job in the Navy as an STG or sonar technician for surface ships, as well as being stationed on my very first ship, the USS Kurtz, FFG 38, 38 Special. I vlogged that last deployment in 2012, our Twilight Cruise. Once the ship was decommissioned, I transferred over to USS Lassen DG 82 out near Kosuka, Japan 
it was for the very first time that I was able to live in Japan. And I was able to vlog my entire experience living there through the Andy Japandi series. And I was very passionate about that YouTube series. And being able to make videos was my main passion. It allowed me to exercise my creativity and it helped alleviate a lot of stress that was going on in my life, especially being forward deployed in Japan. Things eventually came to a head because of all the stresses on the ship, eventually got out-processed and went back to America to go back to school, now in my 30s. So I had a lot of stumbling blocks in doing that just because I had a lot of emotional baggage from my time in the Navy and I just didn't know how to deal with that. I kind of stumbled my way through school initially, decided to take a break for a bit to go back home to my folks in Ohio to get my head on straight and go back to college later. During that time, we started a video production company and I just learned a lot more about uh, the technical aspect of video editing. Because before, like my early YouTube videos were very cut paste, cut paste, there wasn't really a whole lot to it editing wise, but it was thanks to working for my family's production company, as well as editing for other YouTubers, which I started doing once I went back to America, that I became more curious about how to really put stuff together and became a lot more serious about doing that. It was also during that time I got to talking with uh, one of my former shipmates because he had just gotten out of the Navy at that time and he was going out to school out in Japan, going to Temple University. I was talking with him because at the time I didn't know that you could use the GI Bill to study overseas. I thought you had to study in America, but he explained the whole process of how he got in and it kind of gave me that uh, itch to go back to Japan again. But at the time, my GPA was really low, so I decided to go to a community college to rehab my GPA and then apply to colleges out in Japan. From there, I decided to pack my bags and head out to North Carolina to stay with uh, my brother for about a year and some change to work on rehabbing my GPA, saving up, and applying to schools out in Japan. From there, I got accepted out to Lakeland University of Japan out in Shinjuku. At the end of 2019, got on a flight out there and uh, began my journey to Japan once again, but this time on my own. And as you guys know what happened in 2020, a certain global pandemic occurred. Now, obviously, there's more important issues going on with that, but as far as how it affected me, it basically nixed my plans to really restart the Andy Japandi series and to go out to the places that I was looking at online and make videos and to also remake old videos from the original Andy Japandi series. I was really depressed, to be honest with you guys, because I felt like it took me nearly five years to get myself back out to Japan between rehabbing my GPA and saving up and just all that. And it felt like it was just taken away from me like that. But I've been given a whole bunch of new opportunities behind the camera. In addition to just editing stuff, I also shoot stuff for people out here. And I feel like ultimately that would be my main career move to be behind the camera versus being in front of it. And since coming back to the country, I've worked with many people out here uh, doing filming as well as editing. And also on my 35th birthday on December 7th, 2020, I graduated from Lakeland University of Japan with my associate's degree. And since graduating, I've continued to stay out here in Japan doing video editing work as well as video shooting work. But I do plan on going back to school next month to continue on for my bachelor's degree out at Lakeland University of Japan. And it's just surreal to think that I've been able to document that all with you guys on YouTube. I just want to thank you guys for tuning in to my videos over the years, and uh, here's to many more. So, with that said, guys, this is the Andy San. Signing for now, as always, forever. We'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.